Hi, my name is Hade Ainsworth and I'm going to talk to you how to solve your cockroach problems quickly and cost effectively using live gel. So I'm going to look at the biology of cockroaches and um, we're going to look at the products on the market and how best to bait for them and what tricks and tricks we can use um, to do that. So let me share my screen and then we can get started. Okay. So I'm going to look at cockroaches, as I say, the biology and the behaviour, um, some product specifications in particular with um, Goliath treatment recommendations. So we're going to look at some different treatment scenarios. We're going to look at some comparisons with other different actives in the marketplace. And so cockroach behaviour. So they belong to the super order of Dictyoptera. And um, there's approximately four and a half thousand species globally, and they're closely related to termites and crickets. And there's four key pest species that we're going to look at. We're going to look at Patella germanica, we're going to look at um, Lata orientis, so the German cockroach and the oriental. We're going to look at the American cockroach, the Periplanta americana, and the Supella longipalpa, um, the brown banded. So um, the German cockroach, um, it's, it's main pest of Europe, um, likes humidity, it's sometimes known as um, a steam fly, um, likes hot temperatures, it's usually indoors, it's very rarely found outdoors, especially in, in the UK. Um, it's usually homes, kitchens, restaurants, ships, um, cruise liners, places like that. Um, likes dark, warm humidity, electric motors, booths, drunk in, have had them in cellars, um, under breweries, all, ki all kinds of different places, as well as domestic properties. Um, refuse sheets from behind wallpaper, yeah, like bedbugs, they sit, they, they can get flat behind the wallpaper and the, on the seams are. Um, and they, they're very good climbers because of their feet. So horizontal and vertical surfaces have no problem for them. If we look at the oriental cockroach, um, it originates from North Africa and, can, and it comes across. Um, it prefers temperatures 20, 29 and, and high humidity. Sometimes you can find this outside in the UK. Um, it's not very good at climbing surfaces the same as a German cockroach. It's not got the, the, the feet for it, but it will climb rough surfaces like brickwork and stuff like that. And it's not unusual if you've got any black um, external bait stations for rats outside to find them inside. Uh, quite a common thing I used to find was um, on one side, I used to get a lot of cockroaches in outside bait stations, um, especially if there's pigeon muck about as well, because they would eat the, the, the pigeon muck. Um, as I say, usually ground floor buildings, sometimes a bit higher, um, but they aren't the best of climbers unless it's a rough surface, like the dark seedlings, ductings, underground parts of buildings. So when we're looking for them, um, tend to usually have um, do a night inspection or something and go in with your red filter because as soon as you turn the lights on, they'll move. Um, Harbages often outside, as I say, sometimes on the floor or ductings and drains where it's warm and damp and humid often seen them outside if you, you go on holiday to the Tenerife or anywhere like that. Um, the Americana, the American cockroach. Um, tropical Africa, um, but it does have a wide distribution. It's becoming more and more common in the UK. Um, and it does like um, high temperatures in New Zealand, but it can live in the dry conditions as well. And it feeds on quite a bit of um, foodstuffs commonly found in food um, prep and storage areas. Um, but it likes a well hidden and dark environment. It will inside and outside of buildings, typically in um, <sighs> ducks, cracks and crevices, the same as most cockroaches. And of course, they all scuttle when the light goes on. And then the brown banded. Um, we find it in Europe, we find it in the UK uh, more and more so. Uh, I think most people have come across them now. Again, similar environments to the other three, high temperatures, humidity, do like a bit of dry. Um, bathrooms and bedrooms, again, wallpaper hangings. Don't forget the, the nymphs of these cockroaches will, will get everywhere because they're so small um, and they're quite flat. 
interested in the inside upholstered furniture, electrical equipment, TVs, radios, toasters, but saying that I found German cockroaches in, in similar environments, um, backs of fridges, the door sills of fridges, um, compressor units on the back of the fridge freezers where it's nice and warm, all sorts of different places. I've even found them in, in lofts before now, um, the Germans. Um, brown banded that obviously can spread quickly throughout the building. They're all good. It's a, it's a good climber. Um, so would they have um, what we call an incomplete lifestyle? So the egg case is the Eureka, the Eureka, uh, which are the, the little purse sacks um, and they get dropped out the egg will become nymphs and then there's five to seven molts or so in star stages before they um before they move then to an adult and the complete cycle takes about 160 days it's probably with the german cockroach um this is probably the fastest of the, of the ones that we deal with in the uk if we look at the next slide we've got some um we've got some um different time spans so you've got an idea so the German cockroach as we say is the fastest one um development period 45 days adult lifespan is 100 to 160 um and then if you if you think of these so this is the number of avicas per female so each female has this amount of avicas the germans have the fewest the americans and brown banded have the most and then there's a number of eggs that are kind of similar in most of them, except for the Germans, which can hold up to 45 eggs. So they're quite prolific. They might not have that many Afikas, but um, they do have um, a number of eggs in there. Incubation period is almost half the time of any of the other cockroaches. And the development time, again, is half that of the other cockroaches, which is why you've got this very fast um, cycle, which we mentioned previously of 160 days. Um, adult lifespan, kind of similar. When you're treating, you need to pay particular attention to this incubation period, number of days for eggs, because although you might think you've had a clear up on an infestation, if you've got some egg cases down that you haven't found, then you're going to get some nymphs arrive in 22 days, 50s, up to 70 days later. So be aware of that, and we can use monitors to have a look at that. Um, I just wanted to go back to this slide actually here, because when I just said about monitors, when you do a cockroach infestation, make sure you do put some monitoring traps down label them, mark them, map them if you can. Don't just throw them willy-nilly. They are your eyes and ears. Um, if you put those down and you look at the information on them, you, you know, I've done some really big jobs in the past and the, the traps have told me which direction the cockroaches are moving. I put them, I mark on, mark on them which side is closest to the wall. I mark on the direction of travel. Um, I map them, I hotspot them over multiple weeks to see where see where the movement is. And for, for a big infestation, it, it, you know, it helps so much because it allows you to gather and create a picture of that site. So don't underestimate what you can do with, 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 um, with an insect monitor. Please use them. Anyway, um, the live gel. So it's a fast and reliable product. It has what we call the cascade effect. Um, it has a low dose rate and it doesn't contain glucose. So to get a really good bait, there's, there's a few things that we need. We need um, it to have an attractive food source. So it has to be attractive for the cockroaches to eat um, in the presence of competing food sources. And it also has to have a low dose rate that is sufficient to control the colony and for it to be taken back. So when we started to look at attractive food sources we did um we looked in a lab diet so we had a, some petri dishes um and we had some different food samples so in here you can see there's lab diet there is some jam some fictional bait and some water and there's 50 individuals so it's 25 males 25 females and we did this under red light so that they were going to come out they weren't they weren't concerned they were moving quite happily 
and we counted the number of visits every 10 minutes those individuals made to the different food substances. And if we look on this graph here, so the fit for all date is the orange line up here, which over 180 minutes had the highest number of visits. Next was the lab diet, then there was the jam, and then there was the water. Which is quite interesting because it means that what we were developing for of live bait um, was obviously going to be attractive enough. So then we needed something to put into that live bait. So fipronil is one of our um, BSF's leading um, active ingredients for insect control, and that was put in. And this is um, it disrupts the central nervous system through the GABA um, fluorine channel. It's it's also fripinil isn't repellent, so the insects don't really detect it's present, it doesn't aggravate them, it won't flush them out. And the cascade effect uh, we'll discuss in a bit, but it's um, it has two modes of action through um, contact and ingestion and horizontal transmission through um, copography and ne necrophography. So let's just have another look, because the other thing we always need to consider as well is we need to look at um, how, a, how an active ingredient works on resistance, because we do talk about resistance with um, insecticides and with cockroaches. So if we look at permethrin, so those cockroaches that are susceptible, the LG50 to permethrin was between 0.04 and 1.3. Those that were resistant to permethrin, it went up to 40 482.83. Then we looked at emitted cloprid, which is 4.7 to 10, and a big difference again. When fipronil was looked at, and we looked at susceptible and resistant, there wasn't much difference. Now, this, is, this information has come from um, trial data, um, the we and Apple of 2018. Um, sorry, not we, we, we were an apple of 2018. And that was repellency in laboratory performance of selected insecticides to field collected insecticide resistant gel and cockroaches. And that paper is available online if you want to have a look at it. Um, so we talked about ingestion. So ingestion is through the, through the mouth parts here where they eat it um, and contact is off their feet. And then they're obviously gonna clean themselves and, and pick it up and take it in as well. So two, two direct points through entry. So through feeding and grooming, we get this direct control. We then get what we call a secondary control, which is through the eating of the dead cockroaches and the feces. And again, the active is passed on for a third effect. So this is that cascade effect that we talked about. So we've got two ways of control. We've got the direct control and the cascade control. And that helps ensure complete eradication as it gets passed through the, through the colony and, and it reduces callbacks because you know that once a goliath is down, anything that eats it is going to be passed on up to three times, which gives the best amount of control per paint point. So when we looked at um, lab data, we looked at percentage control and the time to control. So um, we got 100% control in one day. And this was on 20 individuals three times with one spot. And one spot is 0.03 grams. It's a very small amount. It's, uh, I'll show you now, it's about the size as a match. So this is a, an England's glory match. Um, so 0.3 is about the tip of an end of a match. It's not very big at all. And so then we looked at it um, in a challenging infestation. So the main characteristics of this trial was that it's and, uh, it was as close to real conditions as we could possibly get. Um, it was an industrial kitchen, multiple life stages, hidden in all places, thousand insects, um, box contained food sources, water, places to harbor. Um, and you can see here, so there's a thousand, we did it once, um, and there's plenty of alternative food sources. Again, um, 0.03 grams was used, and the control is here, so this is what, no change. And then this is with the fipronil at 
5%. So you can see here, five days, 100%. And that was for a thousand cockroaches. We then started to look at two and three spots you, on American, Oriental and Brown Blanded. I don't know why that keeps popping up. Um, so three spots, we got faster control, um, but we reached 100% control on day three, the same as with two spots, but the three spots was slightly faster. Again, if we look at three spots here on the Orientals, much faster control compared to the two spots. And again here, three spots um, over one spot. So doses, one and two spots really. Um, and this was on 50 individuals. Again, one spot being that 0.03 gram, um, the tip of the match. Then we looked at the effect of Goliath if we used it for multiple weeks. Um, so if it was left down. So you can see here that Goliath gel, two spots from each square, on plus one day, um, three days, one week later, four weeks later, eight weeks and 12 weeks. And you can see how um, there was little difference really between the two spots and the three spots. Very little in this environment. Um, and it was done in bars, rest restaurants and bakeries. It was done three times of each, um, again, with each spot being 0.03 grams. And we did the same with the American cockroach as well. We did um, some bakeries, bars and restaurants. Again, looking at the difference between the one spot or the two spot. And this is on the brown banded. Not much difference, a little bit faster control with the two spots. But this is because the cascade effect is there. So as long as you've got the bait in, then the cockroaches do it for you. Just a bit on the physical chemistry. Um, it's unaffected by damp conditions. It's stable in, in, in environments. Um, it's unaffected by high temperatures. And when we think where cockroaches live, that's really important because they do live in warm, damp, humid conditions. And we even applied in high temperature environments like bakeries, bacon ovens. Um, it remained palatable for nearly five to seven weeks. Um, so treatment recommendations. So this is a kitchen. Um, and we always say to uh, look, look around at the places where the food is. So there's usually food residues under cookers, backs of cookers, dishwashers, kitchen kickboards, places like that. Um, and, and think of windows and things as well. So in this situation, you'd probably put um, two to three dots behind each of the large electrical items. Um, if there's a boiler in there, you'd probably cut a couple of two to three spots around the boiler, a few around the sink and you know a couple around the, the cupboards and places like that. Um, the other place to think about is electric sockets and bin areas um, as long and think about um, food stores not all food stores will be in here either so just also consider that and, and think about under the kickboards and places obviously don't put it where on surfaces where food is going to be placed. And then bathrooms and toilets. Again, you're going to be looking at two or three around the bath and the sink area. Um, if there's a boiler airing cupboard in here, you probably put a couple in there. Um, one around the back of the, the, the toilet around here where the waste pipe is um, and one near the water supply. Um, in a heavily infested, you're not going to put probably no more than six spots in the whole bathroom. Hallways, don't forget the, um, the consumer units and the, and the panels, the electrical cable ductings. Um, you might want to put one as a, a point near each um, plug socket or near any switches, telephones, radiators, cable, TV, anything like that that's coming around because they will be routes of access around the property. Um, 
this is to remind me to talk about boiler rooms and common areas. So if it's a block of flats, this is going to be um, an area that you need to bait because of where all the trunking and all the pipes will go. Um, and also to think about um, baiting according to the size and, and the area that you're going to be covering. In here, you'll probably put, I don't know, three to ten points. Um, and remember about a peak has been dropped. Um, and also because of the temperature, it's most likely that this will be a, a hot spot for activity. Bar areas, um, again, probably look at the electrical appliance, look at the, the under the bar areas, um, cash registers under the bottom of the till I've, I've baited before now, um, backs of coffee machines, python tubing under the bars, um, skirting boards, backs of mirrors, pictures, anything like that. Um, maybe even around underneath the, the bar or at the back of the bar. Kitchen, um, in, a, in a commercial kitchen, you need to be focusing on fryers, um, the drawers, the hot drawers, um, the cooking stations and the prep stations under the sink behind electrical appliances, again with the sockets and the mixers, um, anywhere where the cleaning is not going to be great because that's where the food source is going to be. Now I've got a little video on the next slide if it plays, which um, will run through kitchens, which are going to play. Yeah. And this is on our YouTube channel.
just a few watch outs. Um, so ensure sufficient baiting around the oven because the points will age quickly because of the heat um, and the grease and stuff and the dirt from the food, it, it might affect it. Um, put points in wall cupboards um, and just cracks and crevices and just keep an eye on it. Restaurant um, front of house areas. Um, think again about electrical points, electrical connectors um, and places and skirting boards. The thing to remember with cockroaches is not, especially Germans and, and Orientals, um, is that if you use any kind of pyrethroid insecticide on them, you're going to scatter them. Um, and I've been in places where they've been fogged, where they've been sprayed and they literally end up everywhere. So try not to spray. If you've got huge infestations, like you might go in after, you know, a pub or a restaurant opens now um, in read readiness for June when the world reopens again. Um, and it might be that you do what the Americans do. The American pest controllers often have um, vacuum cleaners and they will hoover up a lot of the adults who do the same with um, ants um, so many pests they've done it with bed bugs as well um, and then they will take out as many as they can physically see and then they will gel up because it, it's, it's one way of taking the adults out of the situation the quickest way is to is to physically remove them so hoovering them yes um, I don't know what the distributors do in terms of supplying hoovers in the UK. They're usually HEPA ones that they use in the States. But I'm sure if you Googled it, you'd find out something about it. Um, if we look at competitor products now. So this is looking at a different active. So on this graph here, you can see, uh, let me just get my marker again, my laser pointer. So on here, you can see um, We've got Goliath, which is this far, this dark blue one here. And then underneath that, we've got Imidacloprid and Dina Dino Tetrafin. So you can see there that time to control is fastest with um, Goliath, well, um, Fitpronol um, on Germans. And this is on 10 individuals and it was replicated five times. And then again, we've got Goliath here. And then we've got um, a competitor product here, which is in with a clover gel. Um, this, the bottom line, the blue bottom line is a control. Um, that's on Germans, then on Orientals, you can see it's quite a big difference in the, in the speed of control on Orientals and even more so on the Americans between that and the imidacloprid baits. And then again on imidacloprid, so this is your Goliath gel, showing the cascade effect. So we're getting control of 90% of the population by 14 days. Um, and this is your imidacloprid. So this is from, so bait is put down at zero hours and you can see that it's starting to rise straight away. And then you can see zero hours, nothing really happens until day, day two to three really and then day 14, and then this is a midacloprid at the very end. At, um, what's that, 21.5 milligrams per gram. And this is a no alternative food source and killed injuries removed at each assessment of timing. Um, so Goliath gel, most people know it's a 35 gram tube, one tube that's 1200 meters squared. Spot sizes, as we said, the spot sizes um, when applied, um, one to two spots, we saw the evidence for that for earlier on in the presentation. Um, and each of the spot is 0.03 grams, which is three to four diameter, which as you remember when the England Glories were, uh, was ahead of a match. And, and there it is. So what we have produced, if I've got them here, I did have them earlier. So we, we have these um, little key rings produced. Can you see that? A uh, little key ring. Um, and on the back, it's got this little date when you can hang it on your keys and they're there. So speak to your distributor or you can contact us, we'll send one out to you. Um, it's just a little thing you can remind yourself how not to overbait with life and how to get the most out of a tube. If you look at that compared to um, competitive products with dosing rates, we've got Goliath here, which is a 35 gram pack. 
low dose rate of 0.03 because it's one spot to three spots. Um, maximum rarity to um, 1100, we'll say about 1200. That's one tube. If we look at the other products in the marketplace, so in, in midocloquid products and in doxycarbs, um, yeah, it might look expensive, um, but it, it goes a hell of a lot further. Our, our droplet size is so much smaller. If you put that then into cost, it's about 4p, 4p for a drop. So, you know, one of those spots is 4p. Um, I'm not quite sure what the competitive product worked out at, but you know, it's, it's a hell of a big difference when you compare maximum area treated. It's three times the amount. So, you know, compared to endoxicarb. Um, yeah, three times the nearest competitor, which means that what we do get is we get, um, you put in less bait down. We've already shown that. If you look at that, the size of the bait that drops, so less bait. Um, you're getting a faster treatment. And um, because you're doing that, it's going to be more cost effective because the, the biggest cost for anyone doing any kind of treatment is travel to site, movement from site. So don't take our work for it. We, um, as part of our 21st birthday celebrations, because Goliath is 21 this year, um, we, um, we are celebrating 21 years, hopefully with cake later this year. Um, we spoke to some of our customers um, around Europe and, you know, we've had um, Carmelo um, speaking about the cost effectiveness, same results, 100% cut approaches, 70% more profitable than any other gel on the market, great strap line. Um, 35 to 50 apartments, ISS get out of it in France. The higher cost is offset by the reduction over time. Um, also, we've just shown, yeah, the initial outlay for a cost of a tube might be more, but we've already said it goes three times forever. Our own Brian Silcox here in the UK, um, it's his go-to product now. Um, Christian, most effective infestation, eradicated in 48 hours. You know, that's the sort of thing that you, clients dream of. You know, you go in there and say, I'll get rid of this cockroach infestation, 48 hours, brilliant. Um, tested, tried and tested technology. Um, cascade effect basically. Um, actually, it's actually how it was sold. Um, Glyph gel is still very attractive. We recognize the great benefit to the fact it does not smell and two, it does not stain. The product only offered advantages and it was super and it was very effective. So don't just take our word for it, they're there already. Um, thank you for your time. I've overrun by a few minutes. Um, and on behalf of BSF, we'd like to thank those that have already been using Goliath um, for using it. It's been tried and trusted now for the last two decades. As I say, it's our 21st birthday this year. And at some point later in this year, hopefully we can catch up with you and we can have some cake. Um, <laughs> I'll hang around for some questions. Thanks a lot. Let me start sharing this. And I should, oh, I should say as well, is that um, we also have these booklets. So if you want anything on cockroaches, we've got these little booklets as well. These are best practice guides. They're an A5 booklet. They've got a life cycle in there. And they're quite good for training tools for technicians. They give a lot of information. Um, they've got some um, indications for baiting plans and things. These are quite good if you've got areas where you've got... Um, language issues with customers, um, interpretation. Um, so yeah, they're available. And as I say, these are available too. So if you want any of these, either speak to us or um, you can come, come on the stand in a bit or you can contact us either way. Um, we're on Twitter and we're, you can contact us directly. Okay, thank you very much.